Hey there, my name is Fallout, and pull up a chair. Today we are talking about the importance of love and death. No, what? Not like in life. What's wrong with you? In Destiny 2. Go talk to your mother about that other stuff. Love and Death is the newest grenade launcher in Shadowkeep. Now you know me. I wouldn't be out here talking to you about any old weapon unless it was good or at the very least brought something unique to the table, and Love and Death is no exception. So, what does it offer? Well, with the right roll, this thing is a PvE powerhouse. As we all know, grenade launchers are still very effective damage dealers in PvE and can do a great job at handing out big chunks of damage with extremely little effort or accuracy. Now, while the Izanagi's Burden currently remains my favorite raid boss shredding weapon at the moment, it's still a really good idea to pair it together with a kick-ass grenade launcher. Enter the Love and Death. If you're curious about where to grab this gun, you can get it from everyone's favorite eye-glowing edgelord, Eris Morn. You have to complete the Essence of Insanity questline, and your reward will hopefully be a good roll on this bad boy. Let's go through what the gun can roll on each column and figure out together what exactly we're looking for in the PvE god roll. First up, column 1. Every option here is going to be between 5 stats. Blast radius, velocity, handling, stability, and recoil. And before we go any further, let's talk really quickly about blast radius. When you hit an enemy with a grenade launcher, you get two numbers on your screen. The lower damage number is the impact of the grenade smacking into the target and making physical contact, and the higher damage number is the explosion damage. When you alter a grenade launcher's blast radius, you end up changing both numbers. I promise you, I'm not yanking your chain here. DM me about that. For whatever reason, raising your blast radius means you have a slightly higher explosion damage number, but you also have a lower impact damage number. I don't know why Bungie does this, but they do. Take a look at this example. Here I am with the I am alive grenade launcher from the collections. Raising the weapon's blast radius resulted in higher explosion damage, but lower impact damage, and it ended up lowering the damage per shot overall. Lowering the blast radius lowered the explosion damage, but improved the direct impact damage. Overall, the lower blast radius resulted in higher overall damage per shot. This was also true on the memory interdict grenade launcher. So, even though I pretty much just made a case-closed argument for having lower blast radius for more damage per shot, we're actually going to skip column one altogether right now and get back to it later. I know, I'm blue balling you right now. I promise this will all make sense a little bit later. Put your faith in me, my children. All right, so for the moment, let's move on to column two, where we've got seven options on the table. Those of you out there who really know your grenade launchers already know what perk we're looking for, so I won't beat around the bush. It's spike grenades. Why? Well, we're looking for anything we can do to up our damage output, and spike grenades is really the only option that's gonna let us hit even a little bit harder. Spike grenades are a 50% overall buff to impact damage, and even though impact damage is the smallest number that appears when you whack enemies with grenades, every little bit of damage helps and adds up. It also improves your stability by 10, but no one really cares about that. It's like the little fake umbrella that comes in your fancy drink. Sure, it's nice, but it's not why we ordered the drink. So we want to hit harder and do more damage, and that's all. Spike grenades is the pick. Now, there are other perks in column two that fall under the category of not awful. Mini frags, high velocity rounds, and alloy casing. Can you guess why? Because of the buff they give to reload speed. Now that Bungie took away our ability to auto-reload our weapons with Lunafaction boots or rally barricades, reloading is kind of a big deal. Any buff you can get in that department will be appreciated, so even though Spike Nades is the holy grail for more damage per shot, anything with a good reload buff is a fine silver medal. Moving on to column three, we've got six options on the table here. Let's weed out what we don't care about. Hmm, threat detector better reload stability and handling when enemies are in close proximity, you say? Well, golly gee, I can't think of a more safe way to use a grenade launcher than when a bunch of enemies are so close in my face I can smell their breath. What could possibly go wrong? Hard pass. Pulse monitor. Now, I appreciate the auto reload buff, but having it linked directly to your health is weird and risky and definitely not what we are looking for. Moving target, usually an awesome perk for non-power weapons in PvP, 
we really couldn't care any less about target acquisition with a nade launcher in PvE. What, are you worried that you're gonna miss that quickscope headshot on the raid boss the size of a barn? Pass. Genesis is interesting. Breaking a combatant's shield can fill the mag from reserves. Not bad by any means, but I think we can do better. Rangefinder. This improves your projectile velocity when ADSing. It actually doesn't help a whole hell of a ton, but it's not a really bad perk to have. If you have it, that's probably fine, but what we're really looking for here is field prep. Increased ammo reserves, not to mention faster reload speed when you're crouching, booyah. Now some of you out there might be saying, hey, why don't you just put a mod on your armor for more nade ammo reserves? And to those people, I would reply, hey, Quit trying to pee in the punch bowl. I mean, you could put a mod on your armor for better grenade launcher reserves, but if you have field prep on your gun, then A, you don't have to, and B, you now have more room on your armor so you can equip other armor mods. Win-win. More ammo overall means more shots to do more damage and faster reloading. Yeah, it's only while crouching, but who cares? We need all the reload we can get these days. Field prep is the play, and not having it won't totally ruin your god roll, but it's definitely the perk to have. Now we arrive at column four. This is a good news, bad news type situation, fellas. Bad news first. While there are some fine perks here, there's just one one that we want, but the good news is that there's only four options here, so you really have a one in four chance of getting the god roll perk for column four. So what do we not want? Well, ambitious assassin is kinda cool, being able to overflow the magazine is neat, but you have to get a bunch of rapid kills beforehand. So if you're getting kills on trash enemies to overflow the mag, that means you're wasting shots on low level enemies that could have been spent damaging the raid boss. So nah to that perk. Quick draw is definitely not bad. We love handling, but quick draw does nothing for us damage wise, so we're gonna pass on it. Sorry, buddy. Kill clip. Normally, a highly chased after weapon perk, but not here. Much like Ambitious Assassin, getting kill clip to work means you first have to fire shots at and kill other enemies, but what I'm looking for here is a PvE boss shredder, and I only want to be firing shots at the boss if I can help it. Any shots fired at other targets, to me, are shots wasted. And what we're left with is full court. Increases detonation damage as the projectile travels further before exploding. That's what I'm talking about. So remember how I said hitting an enemy gives you two damage numbers? Full Court gives a maximum buff of 25% to the bigger explosion number at a range of 50 meters and beyond. And now that we know that, let's quickly jump back to column one. Remember way earlier when I said that on a regular grenade launcher, improving the blast radius gives you better explodey damage, but less impact damage resulting in possibly lower damage per shot overall? Well, now that we know that full court gives a 25% buff to the bigger explosion damage number, that's what we want. Yes, even if it results in slightly less impact damage, we want to improve the bigger number any way that we can, so that probably means more blast radius, and with that in mind, the pick is Volatile Launch. The biggest boost to blast radius possible with 15, which we need to squeeze extra damage out of full court. And what about the masterwork, you say? Take a wild guess, blast radius. Normally, that would probably hurt your overall damage per shot on other grenades launchers, but with full court on the table, that big explodey number is what we're trying to support. Finally, because we wanted a boss killing weapon to begin with, what weapon mod should you slap on this puppy? Boss spec, but of course. So let us review what is our god roll, love and death. Volatile launch, spike grenades, field prep, full court, a blast radius masterwork, and boss spec. Guaranteed to instill fear into the hearts of strike and raid bosses everywhere. Best of luck in acquiring a well-rolled love and death. Hopefully you've been very nice in helping out Queen Hot Topic, aka Eris Morn, on the moon. Be good to her now, she's been through a lot. If you found this video helpful, please click on the like button, and if you haven't already, do me a favor and slam the subscribe button because you'll get notified of new content and you'll be helping my channel grow. Thank you all very much for watching, and I'll see you next time.